Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hukalo TV Human Colonies Saturday Live Webinar with Jim Charles. Hello, Jim. Hey. Today is July 2nd. Wow, this year is flying by. Anyway, we have a bunch of folks here to enjoy the webinar. Valerie is here. Valerie, can you tell us who all is here? I sure can. Thanks, Dan. Today we have Christopher, Krellick, Liney, Michelle, Ray, Wendy, and myself. And Jim, can you let us know who's there with you? Yes. Well, first of all, um, Angie's upstairs. Let's see, we have Alex, right? Erica. Erica, I'm sorry. Erica, Herb, Sandy, John, and Raymond. What? Hey. Erica, I knew that. <laughs> yes. I, oh, I already said you first. I said you were upstairs. <laughs> all right. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day here, and rare, I mean sunny and all kinds of things. So very unusual for Rochester. We're having a beautiful summer, and it's uh, more sunny than usual. So we're we're enjoying that. So um, any uh, announcements out there? No? I don't really have I don't really have an announcement. Well, oh, maybe I do have an we announcement. We have the Reiki announcement. We have the Reiki too? class mm -hmm. starting yeah. up again, and I forgot the exact date. Let me go find the exact date just real quick. It is uh, July 10th. July 10th and July, July 10th. 17th. So Reiki one will be offered July 10th and the 17th, and to sign up. Go to Reiki at humancolony.org or go to humancolony.org and on the left-hand menu go to the Reiki section and sign up there. Uh, all the rest of the information is there on the website at humancolony.org and um, that will start, wow, in eight days. So you have a week to decide, I guess, if you're going to do the Reiki class, go sign up there if you're interested. And... Um, that's all I have for right now. Honestly, that's all I know of. Okay, there seems to be a lot of interest in the Reiki class. There are some people signing up already. So if you're interested, sign up fast because that's going to fill up fast, I think, because a, a number of people have expressed interest in it. So that will be July 10th, which is a Sunday. A lot of people have requested a Sunday because it is um, better for them they have work and things of that nature and if we do it on a Monday or through Friday then they can't join us so keep in mind we're gonna do it on Sunday now and that's better for a lot of people also um, I've been asked to be on the channel panel this year in October so uh, I have to get more information about that but uh, Rob Gothier contacted me a few days ago so we'll We'll keep you in, informed about that. So that's exciting. That is yes, exciting. I'm very excited about that. It's sometime in October, and I'm not sure when. That reminded me. There's another event in October, October 7th and October 8th in Phoenix, Arizona, is the Rise Celebration, and uh, some of us are thinking about going to that event in Phoenix. Oh wow! Cool. Yeah, and then we want to uh, take a, a partial day and slide up to Sedona because there's rumblings that there might be an event, another Hukalo event, uh, in Sedona for the March uh, Spring Equinox. And it'll be styled somewhat similar to how the Hot Springs event was where we rent a house and we just kind of go bonkers for some days and then and then have a great time again. So yeah, more information was, on that as that solidifies. I know we're looking at one house already, but we don't know if it's big enough. We're trying to look for another house. So if we can find suitable stuff anyway for March. So if people are interested in going to physically hang out at a like retreat thing, we have one kind of going for March. So start saving your pennies if you're interested. The last one was absolutely incredible. Uh, when we went to uh, Hot Springs, it was unbelievable. It was called Beyond Belief, and it really was. So we had an, we had 25 people there. Was it 25? 
We had 20 or 25. And you know, I lost count at like 16. <laughs> I gave yeah. up. I got it busy. was over 20, and we just all got along very well. And, it and was I still beautiful. don't have a voice. <laughs> you still don't have a voice? <laughs> just from talking so much and singing and laughing and everything. It was just wonderful. Yes, it was a very interesting time. So, all right, if you're ready, I will do a little meditation and we'll bring someone in, see what information is out there for today. And uh, blessings to all of you. Hope, hopefully you're all going to have a good session today. I have no idea who's coming. So I know I'm calling on Ish to come give us a, an update on the, uh, the energies that are coming through the solar system. That's about the only one that I, I know that will probably be here. Okay, well, we were also wondering about the uh, Vibrational Recalibration Center for those who are needing that information as well. So if somebody wants to line up for that, maybe your beings will be able to help with that as well. Okay, I don't, I don't feel the Octorians around, but that doesn't mean that they won't come. So, alrighty righty then. All right, thanks, Jim. I'll be back later. Have a wonderful session. Greetings. This is Ish. How are you? I've just come to report on the energies that are coming through your solar system. The fourth dimensional clouds, as they are so notably called. And they are getting closer, faster than we expected. There are some ridges in the black matter, as we call them, that make things move along faster or slower than necessary and these ones are actually pushing it a little faster so the effects of it are becoming a little bit more apparent I know that many of you have experienced some of these effects you're calling them the Mandela effect they are becoming more and more in increased is that the way to say that but anyway it they are increasing in their uh, volume also uh, fourth dimensional energy is pulling the timelines together a little bit greater uh, when they pass through certain areas and this is going to actually hit the earth pretty full on it is going to be a positive thing for mother earth because this will awaken a lot of her uh, unstimulated energy let's put it this way so therefore she's going to to be a little more stimulated the energies of the earth will calm down much faster since the equinox has happened or the solstice I'm sorry and since the solstice has happened the energies have calmed down a uh, quite a bit have you noticed that so therefore they were calling many other groups were calling for it to ramp up but as you know it's calming down at least until uh, September we're seeing that September, sometime in September, the energies will hit and things will start changing a little bit more because these fourth dimensional energies that are in this cloud are sort of fluctuating. So that is why many of the third and fourth dimensional beings are leaving the uh, solar system. Anything fifth dimensional and above will probably stay because it won't affect them as much. So you can see that we can see already that some have left but many are going to stay till the last minute of course but uh, because but they cannot get close to the earth because they will be affected by the energy so they're staying a good distance away from where the cloud is going to come through however they are experiencing seeing a Mandela effects as well in their own crafts and things of that nature it is just natural for third and fourth dimensional 
uh, beings to experiencing the to be experiencing these things while the cloud is getting closer. So I am sure many of you have also heard many of the different things that are happening. But do not worry, things will go back to normal after the cloud is beyond, has gone beyond uh, the precipice. And um, the cloud is over 400,000 miles long, so it will take a little while for it to go through, but it is, it will not last more than a few months probably until the end of January or the beginning of February. Is there any questions about it at this point? I think it's pretty explained for the most part. Yeah, I think you did an excellent job of explaining, Ish. Um, I do have one little question, if I can, of course. please. Yes. I'm wondering, you say that this is a, a cloud. Is that also a plasma energy? There is plasma within the cloud, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, with any kind of cloud of this nature, you will have some plasmic energy, but it's not dense with it. It's here and there. There are small portions and pockets. Uh, plasmic energy would cause it to become sentient eventually, but at this point, it's just energy. Okay. Is this energy what's causing the mandala effect? Yes. Okay, and could you briefly explain that for us? Well, what it is, is the timelines are moving closer together. So you'll have overlap and bleeding into other timelines. And so in the closest of the timelines, things are similar, but not necessarily the same. And so some things will be spelled differently. Some quotes will become different. Some places will have different be serving different kinds of food some places some songs it's it's affecting a lot of music because music is very spiritual of course and sometimes very fourth dimensional and so therefore you're going to have missing portions of songs and additional portions to songs also literature it can be also fourth dimensional and so literature will also be affected a great deal so you're starting to see there are actually many, many reported at this time. Now, not all of them are truly Mandela effects. I have looked through that list, and some of the things that they are reporting as Mandela effect are actually things that have been all along in your society. <clears throat> so it is not necessarily all true, but you will notice there are some that are very obvious. So therefore, Look at those ones. Uh, some recent ones are mostly in the music field where portions of songs are missing and things are changed. But as they bleed into one another, as because they are coming closer to one another, that is all. They're just... It's the fourth dimensional energy is pulling timelines closer together and as it gets closer, they get as the cloud gets closer, and the timelines are being pulled together and bleeding into one another. Does that make sense to you? There may be a time yes. when the timelines are actually very, very close together, and you'll be able to see duplicates of things around you. So don't be alarmed. You're not going crazy. They will only they will only last for a second because the energies in the fourth dimensional cloud are fluctuating. So you may see a fluctuating vision of something that is right of yourself in another dimension or of something that you know of in another uh, in this dimension that is close uh, very much similar in another dimension, but it will be fluctuating, so you won't see it as like a solid, or it won't be as um, be like seeing it uh, in a, a spatial way. It will be fluctuating. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. thank you very much. You're welcome. I would like to ask if there are any questions in the room with you there, Jim. Any questions here in this room? Ah, very good. Come around to the microphone. What will the emotions be like 
that we will be experiencing as this happens? Your emotions will be as they should be, but when, when the timelines are closer together, you might be feeling some of the emotions of your other selves that are in these other timelines. And so, but if there are close timelines, emotions should be very similar. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Emotions should be similar, not necessarily in all, in, in every situation, but I would say in a great deal, probably a 97 percentile range, that if you're feeling something different, then it would, that would be something probably from the other timeline. But the emotions should be very similar since they're very close timelines. Any other questions? Well, I have one in the room here, if you don't there. Very, very good. Okay, Michelle, do you want to go ahead? Yes, please. Blessings, Ish. Good to hear from you today. Oh, it's good to Much speak. Much love. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you were, as the energies, first of all, I wanted to know if, um, like, people who are studying our atmosphere, who may not be a part of our particular type of community are yes. familiar with this energy also? Yes, they're familiar with it. They're just, it just is rare to run into it in this form, loose into, in the uh, spatial areas. So therefore, they have, there are anomalies of this nature in other portions of other galaxies as well, and have gone through other solar systems, but none have been human. And so, right. human uh, reaction will be quite different because it has been seeded differently or has been evolved differently than other civilizations. So like ma people who are studying like scientists, they can yeah. see this also? They can see it. It is, let me explain something to you. Fourth dimensional energy, most ships that are cloaked are in fourth dimensional or fifth dimensional energy. Right. Your United States and other countries can see this fourth dimensional energy, but they also see it, they can, they see right through it, basically. Right, right. But it's like uh, heat coming off of a sidewalk. It's sort of a wavy kind of thing in space, and they really can't get a good read on it, but they can see it, they can experience it and see the stars through it and know that there is something in front of the stars. Do you know how you understand? Yes, I understand. I do understand. Yeah. They do see this fourth dimensional energy cloud coming, mm -hmm. but they do not know what it is because it is so large. Right. They cannot perceive that it is a ship, which it is not, but they do perceive it as the similar kind of energy. However, the mm -hmm. fluctuation of this cloud of energy is much greater than any alien ships or anything that is in a spacecraft. Right. So I was curious, as it's coming closer to us, um, is it going to become, and as it passes in our direction, is it going to get more intense, more intense, more intense as the closer yes. it is? It will get more intense in many... We are assuming that it is going to become more intense since it's going to pass directly through your uh, solar system and through the Earth. So we're uh, assuming that it's going to become more intense. However, we believe that your fourth dimensional energy will get used to it in some ways, except for maybe the fluctuation part. You do have yeah. fourth dimensional energy within your minds and bodies. However, it is not in such a great amount that it will make you, make you go crazy. We have decided that your fourth dimensional energy is not uh, in such great amounts that it will cause a great deal of harm to anyone. Right. There are those that, it, it, that do have great deals of fourth dimensional energy. They will be more affected than others. Some of you may be more affected than others because you you have called in fourth dimensional energy and, and increased it and done many things of this nature. However, uh, there is protection for you from Mother Gaia because she does put up a perfect, protective field around the Earth. And this energy she wants to channel directly through her core. 
So she's going to try to make it as easy on Earthlings as possible. Thank you. Um, I've experienced a lot of what I perceive as Mandela effects over yes. the last few weeks. <laughs> you have a lot of fourth dimensional energy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're really kind of fun and or wild. Um, but I would... I, I believe just that that's an attitude that all people should take. Please <laughs> see them as more fun than serious. Yes. Um, and, and I just wanted to thank you. And if anyone who's watching this has not watched the previous video, it's called, like, Ish Part 2. Um, I watched that. I was not a part of the panel, but I watched it, and that's how I knew that this was going to happen and not to freak out. So that's a really important thing. <laughs> but um, Excellent. Yeah, so thank you so much for that information, and um, I love you so much. You're welcome. Take care. There is still part of this uh, experience that is unknown for you. We cannot tell you everything because we do not know everything, because it's never happened to your species before. And so I'm sure that there will be things that are going to happen that are will be unknown, or be a surprise, perhaps, even for us. But we are in fifth dimensional energy, so we will stay close by. We don't have to leave. And we'll be monitoring, watching, and also helping in extreme situations if people are actually being affected because some portions of the cloud are more dense than others. Of course, this is the same with any kind of cloud, any kind of um, uh, thing that is in space as well. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, but anyhow, we are there to help in uh, extreme situations. There is one point about 316,000 miles inside the, the cloud where the the fluctuation of energy is so extreme, we're hoping that part does not go directly through. We're not sure. It, the fluctuation is very extreme. It goes thousands of miles one way and another very quickly. So we're hoping that that is not going to be a major factor. But we are trying to actually push that portion out of the way a little bit. Hello, Ish. Yes. A uh, question from Carolina. She wants to know, when do we expect to meet this cloud? Uh, as we know time, will we be running into it soon, or do we know? September. So the month of well, September. September. Between, uh, because of the, it speeded up a little bit, we're thinking more like the 7th or 8th of September. We used to think it was more like the 15th, but I think it, it's moved up about a week. Okay, so when September comes, be more aware, and then what? Yeah, just September is the beginning of it. Sometime in September, with the fluctuations of speeds and gravitational pulls on the cloud from black matter and different things, we don't have an exact exact time. Okay, but people can just be well grounded, and that will help assist them through the process if they're affected yes. at all. Okay. And those with those people with less fourth dimensional energies that are affecting them will probably find less. It will probably not affect them as much. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Ish. Yeah. Hi, Ish. This is Valerie again. Hello, Valerie. I had a quick question too about the energies coming in. Um, I was just wondering: is this a love energy that's coming? Also with this? Well, I cannot tell you that it's a love energy because it is not um, sentient. It has no feeling whatsoever. It is just an anomaly. It's just uh, a scientific thing, if you will. It has no emotion attached to it. However, you can attach emotions to it if you want to because if you put the love energy into your fourth dimensional energy and then it will actually expand that. So that is a good thought that you put all your positive energy into your fourth dimensional energy so that when the scientific part passes, because it really has no emotion. It is not emotionally charged in any way, shape, or form. Even the plasma part of it is still in a very uh, 
uh, organic state, shall we say, in the, in the way that it is not fully formed to help it uh, correlate together as sentience. I'm not sure that's the right way to say it. As you see, eventually this cloud will become sentient and will be able to move on its own, but that will be not for another couple hundred thousand years. And so this cloud is going to hang out for a while. Yes. Well, it's going to move through at whatever speed it it it's going is to it move us? through. Yes. Is it us moving to them as well, or to the cloud as well? In some ways, yes. Uh, well, you have to understand the the rotation of the galaxy is what pulls the so your solar system along. It's also this. This uh, cloud is actually rather static, so it's actually you moving toward it rather than it moving toward you. But you see, it is also moving in some ways as well. It's hard to explain to you, but yes, you're both moving, and uh, it is moving, but yet there's times when it becomes static or somewhat static but not right at the moment. Thank so you very much. So the movement of the galaxy is actually what's pulling all this together. And you have not been in this place in the rotation of the galaxy for 237 million years. Okay, I appreciate that answer. That was very clear. Um, one more thing. Does this energy, like right now, help to bring up the shadows inside of us, the past events that may be traumatic, that we can bring those up and clear them, um, and clearing them, I mean, by healing them, working through it. Ah, that is a good question. Me being from the fifth dimension, we do things differently, but this, this energy may help with that. I would have to look into that. You see, sometimes you, you shed light on how to uh, scientifically look at it because you're from a different uh, sort of energy altogether and a different, um, of course, perspective and density. So your density would have a different thought process about this than we would. Okay, so if we have our own thoughts about the energy coming, can we influence that energy coming toward us? I'm sure you can influence the energy that's within yourself, which would influence how it affects you. So, so therefore, you stay in a high vibration. Yes. Okay. That's quite right. You see, it has no emotion or sentience whatsoever. So it's up to you to bring whatever good things to it that you propose to bring to it. It does not bring anything but what it is, its own self, to you. I get it. You Perfect. are the ones that have to put the positivity on it. Now, if you choose for it to work with negative thought processes and to clear them, I am not sure how that would work. Because if you're trying to stay positive and also trying to bring out negative, I'm not sure if you can... Uh, dichotomize yourself well I believe we can <laughs> I'm working well. on doing just this what we're talking about so thank you very much Ish and now Dan forgive my to English ask. because I'm, I'm not even sure dichotomize is a word but yeah. <laughs> you know what I meant <laughs> yes, I did. It's a, it's a word today and that's good enough <laughs> yes I will make up some words but I will make sure that you understand them. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's wonderful, Ish. We have a question from Sheer. He says, much love, Jeez. Ish. Yeah, he's wondering how much fourth density energy that he has, and do you have any notion for how it will affect him? Actually, he's been prote being protected by Remulac. Uh, he has quite a bit of fourth dimensional energy. Remulac was concerned that Nivy and Sheer might be uh, negatively affected by it because there's so much fr fluctuation within the, 
the, the uh, center of the uh, cloud and so has put protection around you and so you're probably not feeling too much of the fourth dimensional fluctuation at this point or even any Mandela effects. You will be affected as it gets closer, however. They can only protect you so much. Okay, wonderful. He also uh, asks... Um, Hang on, the page is moving on me here. He says uh, he had a dream a couple of days ago in a place that he'd never been to before, but it just popped into his head the day before. Yeah. He wants to know if this is a fictional place, or is it a fictional no. place that he's never seen, or is it a piece of him? He's wondering what the pop, what the thing popped in his mind for. The reason that he saw this particular place is because Remulac continues to bring him to different places. Uh, and Amok also takes him to different places and hopefully that he will start remembering these things. Of course, once he starts remembering, they will take him back. But they're taking him to spectacular places so that his memory might be jogged in the third dimension. Okay, wonderful. All right, I hope that helps him. Um, I have another question um, from Curly. Curly uh, has been away for a while. This is a person, more personal question, but it's important for people um, who are who may be struggling a little bit. She said she's struggling these days with the emotional depression. Wanted to know if there's a message that you could give her to help her out with this. Yes, there is. Uh, she has been blocked from some positive energies but we can open that up now that I can speak to her and have a clear uh, a clear path to you Curly I can see that there is some negative energies there from third dimensional and a little bit from fourth dimensional energies but right now we'll just clear them out and let me tell you something there is every human will experience negativity and times like what you're experiencing now do not fret. Things will change. You are going through a period right now, but it, it will not be long lasted. I am seeing that I'm going to clear out some of that energy right now, actually. One moment. Feel this energy that is coming to you. Sikara paach aptimi aturati intia unskwitka. And I will speak to you later. I saw that you have a correspondence somewhere, and it will be answered. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Ish. I have one more, just a quick from Jay. Uh, the question he has is, uh, was the snowy owl that he saw last night trying to attack him and his friends, and was it a manifestation of an angry shaman telling them to leave? So he's asking about this I, snowy owl experience. I would have to look into that. One moment. Where are you located? Where is he located? I'm not recalling. Give me just a moment. Uh, he's in Haverhill, Massachusetts. He's in Massachusetts. One moment, please. Massachusetts. Is this Jay Earthling? Yes. Jay. One Jay, moment, please. Jay, Jay, I believe that is. Yes, it is. There was a spiritual encounter there, yes. Okay, but he's asking if it was some kind of shaman. Yes, it was related to spirit and not to alien. Okay. It was not alien in nature. It was spiritual in nature. And it, they were involved in or in some place that was antagonistic for this certain spirit. And it threatened them. Okay. But it, is, it will not harm them at this point, but it just wants them to stay away from wherever it is that, that they encountered it. Okay. 
All right, that that's good on that one. Have a request from uh, member Slava. Slava has yes. been one of the ones. But he has so many questions, I think it would be better if you could address them privately. He has a lot of questions about things going on. He goes several different directions. So if we I could understand. do something I for him. Some of the questions are about his his hybrid children yes and other things and that might if uh, you could set some time aside for him that would be wonderful he does have a lot of visitations from his hybrid children he his mother's hybrid child also is visiting and is he has questions about his mother's hybrid child as well yeah some of those could be done privately I think we have member Jess 444 it's a name I don't recognize but Jess 444 says hello ish could you help provide me with some healing energy or an infusion for my current health situation much love to you so Jess is requesting some healing yeah. I know who Jess is alright that could be somebody I could add to my list as well I do know who this is I have had contact with this person before and therefore yes I can send healing energy however hang in there Jess the energy is coming this energy will be slow in coming because it is dense you need a more dense kind of energy for this healing and therefore I am sending it in a slow pattern when it arrives it will also last for a great deal of time probably 10 or 20 minutes so therefore just let it flow over you do not fight it just let it happen and accept it one moment please very well continue that's all I have for right now. I was going to pass it back over to Valerie. She's got a couple of questions in, in the chat here. Ah. Hello again, Ish. I do have some questions here, and Krellick would like to go first. Krellick. Hello, Ish. Yes. Hello. I have two questions. I want to know uh, what you are, what, what uh, race of people you are, are part of. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I have never told anyone what species I am from. There was a good reason for this, but now many people know because I have made myself visible to some of them. So at this point, I will reveal myself. I am draconian. Okay. I am an ascended master from the draconian people. I was afraid to tell you at first because most people fear reptilians, draconians, and those that are not humanoid. However, my thought process as moving up into the different dimensions has been one of love and understanding for all different kinds of species. So therefore, I will now let you know that I am a draconian, draconian higher ascended master. Oh, yes, um, so if possible, I would like to meet you in the astral dimension. Many of you have seen me. I've given you glimpses of who I am recently, within the last couple months. And people have dis decoded what they have seen and are correct. I would like to see you in the astral as well. Since I am in spirit more than body, you would have to see me in the, in this in the astral world. And my second question, just want to know if there's any information currently for me at this time. There is much information for you. Many want to communicate with you and have communicated with you. You have many questions about those that have been with you and have made contact but have not said their names. So therefore some of these are familiar people and others are not. So we will discuss that at a later point because there are too many to discuss right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, Stephen, are you ready? Uh, yes, thank you, Valerie. 
Hello, Edge. Hello. My son. Um, I was just wondering if uh, if I had a connection with you. The first question. Absolutely. And you've known that for a while. Sweet. And, and I was just uh, just wondering if you have any messages at this time uh, from anyone at this. Thank you. You are welcome. And I will speak to you about our connection later. You have had a past draconian lives, but we met in other species' lives as well that were not uh, reptilian in any nature, but definitely more humanoid. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Ish, it looks like we would like to say that it's been a pleasure to have you here today. And Thank we appreciate you so your time in coming to explain the new energies coming and um, everything else that you've helped us understand today. And Very well. I just want to, to end with this. Your scientists know that this cloud exists. They, they do see it, and they see it coming. They do not really understand and what it is entirely, but they know that it's heading this direction. That it it just looks like a huge area of fourth dimensional energy. That's what it is, and so they are not really fearing it too much, because most people are not affected directly by fourth dimensional energy. So um, they will realize what it does when it gets there. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Hey, Valerie, this is Wendy. I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't have a chat box, and I was just wanting to ask Ish a question, if I might. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. I spend a lot of time in nature, and I, we have been instructed, not instructed, but guided to spend a lot of time in nature to help us through yes. these. And I was just wondering if you could maybe give us an idea of how this energy may be affecting our physical environment with relationship to nature and ourselves and our relationship to that in making this transition through that and Mother Gaia I also is protected. Wanted to... You see Mother Gaia is protected in this timeline. She is immutable in some ways. The you will find the Mandela effect working on the surface of the planet. But as far as the core and the interior of the planet, it is, uh, will not be affected except to reinforce some of her energies her, uh, and bring a greater amount of stability to Mother Gaia. Now, That's actually what I was wondering. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there are many things, other kinds of energies that are hitting Mother Gaia at the same time from the center of the galaxies from different areas of uh, the solar system and things of this nature which you have all been aware of as well. So she is dealing with many kinds of energy but this fourth dimensional energy will help to stabilize her a little bit. Other energies will do the opposite, of course. But at this point, she is looking forward to some uh, reinforcements. Excellent. Thank you. And is this rush of energy that we're feeling also responsible? Is this meshing of the timelines also why we're beginning to mo become more aware of the other fractals of ourselves that we're being almost introduced to our ourselves um, is this oh, part yes. of the effect of that. Uh, that well be, you realize that behind every one of your chakras is past lives and fourth dimensional energy is what uh, some people use to read those past lives so yes you'll be introduced to fractals of yourself in many ways there are many many different things that would happen, but I have not gone into all of them because not, I do not want to give you a, um, I do not want to you to experience things that are unnecessary. So the more information I give about it, I want to give just the basics because the more information I give about it, 
the more apt you are to experience a lot more things which may not be in your best interest. I understand. It's just some, some of us are already experiencing those uh, ideas, well, and I was just thinking it was probably related to this influx. Yes, bring it all into a positive aspect, and yes, fractals of yourself will be initiated because of all the past lives in the chakral system. You're just living with all these past lives. They've come through. And yes, of course, fourth dimensional energy might brighten one of those past lives up or a fractal of some part of the soul that has not been seen before or something of this nature. But beware, do not, do not bring it into a great... Do not put great meaning on it because it may not necessarily be for this lifetime that you needed to see that. But it is part of past lifetimes and fractals of the soul that are not part of this particular timeline. Excellent. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful answer. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you for coming. I am very happy to be here and thank you for your questions. They're very insightful. I, you surprise me so much as a species. Sometimes I, I look at some parts of your species and say, oh, it's hopeless. But then I, hear, then I hear all your questions and I have hope again. So very much love to you and I will talk to you some other time. Hey, Ish. Ish, um, much love, Ish. We love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Was that sheer? Yes. yes. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask you if you can come astrally to me, if you ever want I to visit. I can. I ask Remulak to let me through, because he has a block around you that only certain people can get through it. Mm. And you, sh you have to ask permission. I have to ask permission as well, but if you say that you want me to come, it's more, uh, I think that he will be uh, more apt to let me through, seeing as that I am a draconian spirit. Okay, thank you very much. Much love to you. Rabbi Lack is not fond of draconians, just to let you know. <laughs> so. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Ish. Uh, that was very Hello, interesting. John. Yes. yes, I know. It's me. It's that guy. Yes. So many people are asking several things. They want to know about help with finding their jobs that they love, and then many people are asking to connect astrally as well. So there's yes. there's, there's Curly who's asking uh, to connect astrally. Uh, Slava yes. still has we his can... questions. Uh, Daly Robertson King... Uh, Here's Casper wants to know when things are going to change about his about Casper's workplace things that resonate. Um, here's one that's asking about DNA infusions and things. So people are asking what they, what can they do to help align themselves with jobs that they like better. What can they do to connect to you astrally? Do they only just need that call for you, or can you give that information, please? Yes. Remember. Uh, many of you forget about the law of attraction. You can bring things to you, anything that you want by following it. Now, if you're not familiar with the law, with the law of attraction and how it works, you must reach out beyond your, reach out beyond your reality. Bring in thankfulness and love. Thank God, Jesus, and all those that you believe in the universe or whatever deities that you believe in, thank them for the things that are coming to you. Expect that they are coming to you. Thank every day for the things that you want to come. If you want changes, if you want finances, if you want new jobs, if you want anything that you want, it's not work to do this. It is belief and expectation and thankfulness that brings this to you. It's positivity. Like things bringing into like... Ah, you know what I'm talking about. Look up the 
the law of attraction on your world because it will help you with all things. Your life can be more positive if you bring it into positive realms. Now, here is something else that you must understand. Many of you are living in each now, but bringing a very sad or negative uh, feeling to now and you live in cycles everything is in cycles on your planet or in the universe even and if you bring a lot of negativity into your nows it will repeat it repeats itself try to bring as much positivity into your now as possible because if a now is positive it will repeat it will re Pete, if you have much positivity in your nows, those will repeat. Pete, now there are situations that that may seem negative, like death or uh, things that happen with contractually with pain and things of this nature. But you can still remain positive through these things and remain in a a positive cycle. Now you'll say, well, how can I remain in a positive cycle if someone has died and I am feeling very sad? You can thank God that they are out of pain, that they are in eternity and, and living in beauty, love, and, and all the positivity that is in the spiritual realm. Although you may be missing them, you may can still make that positive. Remember all the wonderful things that you did together. Remember all the great things that happened when they were alive. And do not be sad for yourself. That is very selfish. I know it happens. You miss people. It is. But try to take yourself out of it in some ways. And bring all the beauty of everything that is happening with them and with the people around you. Try to cheer them up. Try to make them happy. I know this sounds like a very non-third dimensional outlook. However, it does work. And your energies as positive people are repeated in your cycle. And what does this do? This makes you a better example of a person that people would want to be, for one thing. It also draws to you much more positivity. Do you understand this? You can control, create your own life, and create your own destiny in some ways. Now, there are things that will always happen. In every density, there are things that happen that are unexpected, maybe perhaps even what you might consider negative, but you do not have to make that your, the focus of your entire life. Remember your positivity. Remember to bring in any positive thought that you can to help you work through this negativity. Do you understand this? This is something that humanity, that is why society in your realm is so gray and heavy is that they have never learned to bring any positivity to their defeats, to their illness, to their anything, to their failures. Because a failure, you may, they may drown in it, whereas they can use it as a stepping stone for the next portion of their positive reality Oh, certainly, there will be a few days of boo-hoo. But you must remember that is not why you are here. Remember that there is more important things in your, your life coming. Everyone is important. Everyone has a positivity that can be used to change the world, because that is what's needed right now in your existence, in your density. It is necessary for you to remain as positive as possible and to realize that the lessons learned are for positive reasons, not to bring you down. 
but you need to know about the negativity so that the positivity can be more joyful, understood, and realized. Anytime there is negativity in your life, it helps you to realize that the joy is where you want to be. You don't want to be in the negativity or the sorrow or the sadness or the fear or the pain or the hatred. But you want to be in a positive place. And so use those things as a springboard to come up. Do not stay down, but say, no, I don't want to be here. I want to be here. And I know that many times that's difficult. I know that. But you can find a way. Some people love to be uh, depressed. Why? Because they get more attention. This is a way for attention sometimes for people to, to, to be boo-hoo and everybody will pay attention to me and things of this nature. But this is not a good example to the world. You want to be a good example. You don't want to be the boo-hoo. You want to be the one that is comforting the boo-hoo. You understand? Thank you so much, Ish. Carolina has a quick question, if she might. Yes. Hello, Ish. Much love. Carolina, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Ish, I just wanted you to know that uh, we love you regardless of which species you are. Thank you. So, don't worry. <laughs> um, I'm very, very large. Um, People would be frightened. <laughs> but we still love you. Thank you. I am glad. I have decided <laughs> that it is time to be uh, truthful about these things. That if you dislike me because I am a draconian, then so be it. But I still have good messages for your people. Yes. Yes. And we welcome them. Thank you. Ish, um, I've been thinking a lot about you lately. Um, I was wondering if you've been around me. Um, yes. Or is it just my imagination? And is this to do with uh, the channeling I want to learn how to do? Yes, you are close to be in a channel, but, and do not, yes, I am around you, and you feel me, and you understand why I am there, and do not be discouraged. Your time is coming, and you have done some, a small amount of channeling just recently, have you not? I think so. <laughs> yes, you have, and so therefore, I have been helping you with that. Don't be discouraged. It will come when it comes. And I will help you. And you know what? Be of great cheer. You have so much to be happy for. And um, I love you and I will be with you. And yes, I am around. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, is this new language that's coming? Is this your language? Um, no, it's not my language. But it is a language that I know of. So oh, continue, to, continue to move. Yes. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you as well. <laughs> okay, Ish, if there aren't any more questions in the room there with you, we will bid you a good day. But let's see if there is. There is a question there. here in the room. Hi. Ish, how are you? I am fine. How are you? Um, I had a, a dream last night, and I'm wondering if there's anything that you can tell me about it. What is it? Um, uh, it had to do with aliens. Yes? Yes. Uh, were you visiting them? Or are they visiting you? That was a question. Yes. They were visiting you. And the, the question was, she wanted to know about the aliens in her dream. And as far as I know, they were visiting you. They were given permission to come through the veil that is in your house and just say hello. They were actually friendly, they were actually um, curious, and they had something to do with alien Ken. So, um, does that answer your question? Yes, 
Yes, Amy and Ken actually let them through so that they could speak to you. Is yes, and the, he said, "Are you alien Barbie?" <laughs> I now relate that to uh, a toy. <laughs> Very good. Okay, is everyone finished in the room there with you then? And I believe we will bid you a good day then. And I will move forward. Thank you once again for coming to see us and delivering such wonderful, truthful messages. Thank you. And I did not expect back to be here but for a few minutes, but thank you for having me. I will go now. Namaste. Namaste. We will speak to you now. Hello. We are of the Octorian people. Mm, welcome. So nice to meet with you today. We are, are not the Octorians from Grikviknir. Oh. But we okay. are Octorians nonetheless. Mm, Octorus seats many Octorians. You have questions about our healing centers. Yes, we, we pushed, were. We sorry. pushed Grindle aside so that we could bring our message. Yes, we were asking about the uh, vibrational recalibration center that's available to the humans when they call upon it for realignment of their light bodies. Could you tell us more about that and other healing things that are available? Yes. First of all, it comes free. It is no charge. There is no consequence. One moment. Right. It's difficult to get into this body. We can take an extra moment. The recalibration centers work on the blueprint of your body. You are born with a blueprint in your body. Some of it is perfect. Other parts are not. We check this first when recalibrating and healing. If healing is available, it will be given. If healing is not available, it cannot be given. We cannot override the blueprint. Do you understand? So if persons have otherwise agreed or contracted for certain experiences, no matter how much they want to transmute the experience, if they have agreed to it, they will go through it nonetheless. Correct. Unless they have changed their contract beforehand. Now, your belief system must be intact that you must realize that we are there. We have appeared to many. But if you do not believe that this can happen, 
it will not happen. You understand? Okay, so call then upon us, and we will come, because when you call us, is it not part of your belief system that if you ask for something, it will be given? So if you call us, there is some belief in us or in the process that we can help. Okay, I was informed about the vibrational recalibration center that it needed to be spoken in those exact words and it must be intended at just an exact time. Is that still true or can anybody call upon the center any way they feel drawn? Using exact terminology is not very human. However, the closer to that exact terminology that is used, the greater the outcome of our contact. We are v vibrationally in tuned to that particular phrase. All right, so I just wanted it to be clear if that's how that was, that it's called... Please use that, make that known, that we are vibrationally in tune to that phrase and vibrationally in tune as we have spoken and as you have spoken. We ourselves can speak to you in any form that we wish about vibration and calibration, but when calling us, please be precise. Right, the words I were given were the vibrational recalibration center. That and is to, correct. And to do that with intent, and it comes instantaneously. It does. All right, thank you for that. What other questions? I uh, have one question from Member Will. Member Will has been a little sick lately, and he's wondering why he is still sick. Is there something we can do for Will, or something Will can do to alleviate his uh, sickness condition? Let me attach to him. Will he call upon our vibrational system? I believe he is listening and will if you will call the vibrational recalibration center. And then the problem him. will be eradicated if it oh. is not contractual. Okay, thank you. Will, listen to my voice. Your vibration is slightly off kilter. We will put it back into its original format. There is a heart matter that is causing problems as well. Not a physical heart, spiritual heart. A confusion a misunderstanding. It will be aligned and you will feel healthier. Continue. There Hello. are many. Yeah, go oh. ahead, Ella. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Hello there. Um, I have several questions as well. And the first one comes in from Christy, who was in our room with us and had to drop. But she would like to know if there are any chances for her to open a spiritual learning center somewhere in Nevada. Of course. Do you have the means by which to open this center? Your dreams can be realized. Do not worry. If this is to be, it will happen, and you will already be finding clues to how to start it. Your foundation and thought process must be realized. 
it must have a good foundation. Yes. She would also request, if you're, if it's possible, a full healing and balance for her autistic son. Can he call us? I'm sure she can have him call you, yes. Have him call us. Ah, autistic. Get your shop. Call us. With uh, no specific thing in mind, just call the Arcturians, or is there a specific Use group? the verbiage that was given. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Miracles Michelle? can happen on your planet. Mm -hmm. Things will be different in the future. Your world is changing. We are here to facilitate some of these changes. Your governments do not help you. We will help you to maintain your health so that you may rise in your vibrations in ways that you cannot when you are unhealthy. Your attitudes will change. Your example will change. So be it. Thank you. Michelle? Beautiful. Hi, how are you today? Much love? I am well. I am glad. Um, I, there was a time a few months ago where I felt certain that I had Arcturian energy, a lot of it, like working on me, on the left, my left side. Um, and I really enjoyed that energy. Actually, first I should ask, am I accurate in that assessment? Yes, but it was not us. But we, we have ascertained that there are remnants of Octurian energy within your body. Yes, so um, I am kind of trying with my, I'm starting to feel uh, energy I'm trying to develop the skill of feeling energy and picking up energy signatures. Um, and I know, or I've been told, that um, Arcturians make up the bulk of my lifetimes. I don't know if that's accurate, but um, I would like, I enjoy Arcturian energy. Let me put it that way. So how would one, do you have any advice? For, um, you are a natural similar. conductor. You you are a natural conductor for Octorian energy, so therefore it will be with you whenever you want it. Our energy will come to you as well if you so de desire. Make yeah. sure you say it correctly, and it will come. Okay. Um. I think that's all. Thank you so much. Much love. Much love to you. It is hard being in this body. Is it all right if we leave? Well, we Before have a you few more questions, if you could hang around for just a couple more minutes, we would really appreciate it. Very well. Awesome. Yes, Emmy has a question for you. She asks um, if there are any messages from the ETs that have been hanging around her, mostly Arcturians. Yes. She is developing more gifts, new gifts, and these are going to be helped by the Arcturians that are around her. She is discovering energies within herself that were never realized before. Also, her joy level is becoming apparent. She is coming out of a low self-esteem and becoming 
a greater individual and we are pleased for her. She is very important to your world. Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you for your message so much. And now Bianca has a question as well, and she would like to know if there are any messages for her personally. Bianca. Yes. One moment, please. There are energies around her that are very much protecting her. I must get through them to find the answer to her question. Ah. There is much light coming in, a realization, a new beginning, something of this nature. That is what I can see only. They are not giving me enough specific. But she will learn soon what it is. Mm, very well. Ray, would you like to go? Ray. Ray. Mm, she says on the chat here. Oh, go ahead, Ray. Can you talk? Are you talking yet? Uh, hello. Is it working yet? Okay. Yes, I hear a voice. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I had keyboard troubles. Um, okay, before I ask my question, I want to ask a very innocent question. Why do you sound so slow for an Arcturian? Is it the uncomfortability in the body? The uncomfortability is because we are coming from a great distance. Mm -hmm. And at this particular time, there is other energies that are trying to inhabit the body. And so we are keeping them at bay. And that is taking a lot of our energy away from the communication. Thank you. All right. So, um, but thanks for being here. Thank you. About the um, recalibration centers, um, can it help me in my dream state, possibly astral as well, uh, where I've been feeling a lot of stagnation. Um, I think I'm just like hanging out in one chakra, which is just not getting anywhere. And I've tried lucid dreaming. I remember lucid, being lucid in a dream and just feeling really down. Like, what do I do? <laughs> kind of like call on us. <laughs> we can change that Maybe. vibration. Awesome. Yeah. It is partially okay. because there is third dimensional energy around you that is keeping you at bay. Mm, that but may we be can part of the through this, stuff. We can cut through this vibrational energy. Mm, I'd like to be clear on which of it is me and which of it is contractual because I am aware that some of it may be family, family related then which part is me? So I'll, I'll 40%, keep the intention. 40% is family related. Thanks. And 40% is related to you as well. There is another 20% that is unknown until we get there. I can work with that. Thank you. That's all from me. Excellent. May I ask what people can do to call upon the Arcturian energy? So many people are calling and asking to connect what they can do to connect personally. Do you have information for them that will handle those masses? 
if they believe that they can contact us, they will be able to. We will not turn anyone down. Not unless they are contractually bound. We have already stated this. Have them use the correct verbalization because there is vibrational correctness to it. And therefore, if they use it correctly, it will be done for them as they wish. Wonderful. Thank you for so much for that. We have one last question from Christopher, then we need to allow you to move on. Thank you. Hello. This is Christopher here. Christopher. Hello. Uh, my question, please, um, have I an Actarian connection, please? I could not hear you. Have I an Actarian connection, please? You want an Octorian connection, is that what you Do want? I have one, please? Ah, oh, do you have one? One moment, Thank please. You. I will connect with you directly. There is a star seed connection with you for Octorian. The names of two individuals from Octorus has come to mind. Fenchata and Turkarina. Very well. Um, before you leave, can we please ask if anyone there in the room has any questions for you, just quickly, if you don't mind? There is not any questions here. Mm, very there well. is another to come in at this time. Greetings. Hello. I am still here. Oh, I'm sorry. Namaste. We appreciate you coming today. Be well. Mm, thank you. Thank you again. I am Takur. Greetings. How are you today? Oh, very Hello, well. Takur. I'm surprised to hear from you again, Takur. Greetings. Yes. I just heard that someone wants an update on the colonies. They are very doing very well. And the healing colony, Colony 6, is working out very well. There should be galactic healing classes coming later this year they have discovered that there are some galactic methods that work very well for humanity and those on Earth. Therefore, we will be training it as well as some of the features of other different kinds of Reiki as well. The new Reiki, the Aquarian Fire Energy Healing, is also very beneficial and will be trained very shortly. Are there questions about the colonies? There is. Liney, would you like to go first? Yeah, please. Hi, Kit to care. Hello. Liney, I hi cannot there. hear you. Hello, there you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hi, how are you? Wonderful. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I really wanted um, to know about the weather. Um, in the UK, we've had like virtually non-stop rain. Um, yes. And also, there's that, and also there's um, something about the jet stream I've read recently that um, they say, they're saying that the jet stream is going to be changing or it start changing, moving. Yes, your jet stream is in an unusual pattern. And because of the way that the energies are going to be hitting your planet, jet streams will change. 
Now, there are energies from the galactic center, also energies from other portions of the solar system, and now the fourth dimensional energies. This will all change in jet streams. Um, if you are noticing, weather around the world has changed. There are many states of emergency in the United States area and Canada and Mexico. There are many different things happening that are causing extreme weather problems. Also, there are fires and other things that are also working on the topography of your world. Now, the rain that you are experiencing is due to the jet, jet stream change. And the jet stream change will only make things a bit worse, unfortunately. There will be areas that were once wet that are going to be very dry, and once areas that were very dry that are going to be very wet. And other areas that were in between that will be affected in other ways. It is hard to say now at this point how all things will be affected. But as we have charted out the world at this time, most places will be much drier than wetter. This is going to be a problem for crops and growing. So therefore, we have understood this and are working on a solution that might bring more rain to some areas that will be without it. Okay. Um, to care, I just had um, one other question, actually. I, I was interested to know how this um, EU vote um, affects yourselves um, with, with, in regards with like, relationships with this planet. It does not affect us at all. But it does affect your planet. Your financial systems are eventually going to collapse. And this will be part of that. This will be actually a positive. It is actually, as we see it, a positive thing for the eventual collapse of the economy. It, okay. it takes away its alignment and believe it or not, the more countries that are aligned together, the stronger the economy is worldwide. You will find more nations that will want to either drop out or will collapse on their own. One by one, there are certain key factors once certain particular countries collapse financially, the rest of the earth will have to follow because they are indebted to these countries or the countries are indebted to them. China, Greece, United States. They are three of the major ones. So, so this was like part of the plan then, uh, you know, the, the start of this? It is not part of our plan. L has made the plan many hundreds of years ago, obviously. But yes, it is part of a plan that we will see how it works. Okay. Th thanks, Takur. Love you very much. I love you very much as well. There does seem to be a density in the atmosphere here. However, I am much better at this moment. Is oh, there any other questions yes, pertaining to the have. colonies? Michelle would like to have a question with you, please. Michelle. Much, much love, Ticker. Michelle, how are you? I, I am doing very well, thank you. Excellent. Um, and you? I am also well. I'm glad. Um, you know, I actually haven't had or thought about the colonies in a, lo in a long time since I found out about them. I, 
I was wondering maybe if it would be appropriate for Takar to for you to reiterate what each colony was and did. And oh yes, absolutely. That's a good idea. And much th many things have changed at the colonies. Nina, I don't know if you remember Nina. She was the original colony master. She is back. She had many official businesses to do, and now she is back as working in the colonies. Colony One is the tele telepathic colony and also works with galactic languages. Colony Two is for health, exercise, diet, and things of, your, of keeping the body in a good state. Colony Three is the video colony where many have been asked to do interviews or many have done films that will help humanity understand what who and what our agendas are in the astral and in the alien states we are we have done hundreds of thousands of hours of films at this point and many of them are tucked away in your internet areas and when they are found they give explanations to some of the things that are happening on your planet and some of the information about us as individuals these things that are found are usually not found by those that are searching for alien information but will find it anyway colony number four is the channeling colony on the channeling colony we help people to open their channel systems and to uh, use them in the proper manner and bring that information back to their planet we are also helping them to discover who it is and uh, that they are going to channel and why the purpose is for their channeling in this world colony five is a recreational colony it is there for those that are are frightened by aliens who need a rest from learning anything from the other colonies or just want to go there to talk or interact with people that they know on the colonies also interact with their friends that are alien colony six is the new colony which is the healing colony it it has all kinds of energetic healing including acupressure and acupuncture Reiki Holy Fire Reiki Qigong Joe Ray many many other things as well there are many kinds of healing formats that we are using yoga is one of these as well but if you go there you may participate in getting a healing or participate in the yoga classes or you may teach or become part of a healing this is up to you excellent so thank you for that description I am curious to know as I do not recall the majority of my dream time if I spend any time there um, in the last six months Yes, you have spent some time on the colonies in the last six months. But and you use you chose to go to colony two for health, exercise, and diet. Sometimes I do that before I go to sleep because I'm not exercising enough here. <laughs> and also you have gone for different things. You went to Colony 4 in January for channeling, and you also went to Colony 4 in March for channeling. Colony 1 you went to in February for tele telepathic and languages. And we but just you have like, not been there recently. You have not had a desire to go. Yeah, I would, um, so if I intend, is, is that really the only thing I need to do is intend to show up? Um, if you ask us to go, you will go. Okay, sweet. Um, and I was, was my healing that you helped with, was that also in conjunction with the uh, Colony 6? 
that you and Dan worked together on? No, recently? this was something that okay. was not part of any of the colonies. Okay. Because there was something different about it. Okay. Colony six does not deal with ex uh, negative entities. Okay. Thank you so much. I love you. Take care. I love you as well. Hello, Takur. Guru Dan. Oh, I have member questions for you. Of course you do. Um, I'm not quite sure where to start. There's so many. They're kind of all over the place as well. Let me address Marco. Uh, for Marco. a moment, from Portugal, uh, an island, Madeira Island. He's Very applied well. for. Uh, it says he's uh, applied for Fendorian DNA infusion, and if it was yes. allowed, and if it started, and how much did he receive, and what is the level of his frequency? And I'm not quite sure what that question is, or maybe he's asking what the level of the DNA infusion is. I'm not sure. There are. I can answer both. Okay. But. Yes, he did ask for Fendorian. The first thing that will happen is that it is put into the DNA, and the second thing, it will be activated. At this point, he is at about 80% of the infusion portion, and it has not begun to be activated yet. When it is begun to be activated, which will be in two days, he will start feeling his Kundalini activate a little bit which is to say that the chakras will be brightened. The appetites of the body will also be enhanced, such as hunger for food, sexual appetites, and things of that nature. But it will only last a short period of time. But this will refresh all the chakras. Also, it will give more clarity of mind, and it will also help with memory retention. Thank you so much, Tucker, for addressing that. I'd also oh. like to address uh, JD's questions. Even though they're somewhat more personal nature, it's important because other people have these questions as well. And um, he says, um, I can speak many different languages from my heart. I want to know what more languages I'm speaking in my latest channelings. I know I'm speaking my father's old language and my mother's. So he, yeah. has, he has that going on, but then he, he kind of adds a second question, and he says, can it help us as humans to exercise a meditation to allow sound of different kind to come through and out from our speech, to allow everything that feels in the moment to simply just come out as it wants? The sounds, of course, can be silly and sometimes sounds out of this world, but to just allow what wants to come out, also allowing any language to come out flowing in the ways of the moment. And yes. Let me explain. Okay, thanks. These sounds are vibrations of the soul. They are coming out and they are changing the world around you. They are some, some will interact with things. Others of these sounds will interact with people. But these are sounds that are necessary to come out of the system. You are expressing yourself in a nonverbal way but it is also a form of channeling. These vibrations can come from outer portions of the galaxy and the universe as well. So yes, express these languages and these sounds. Of course, you know about the Hathors that are in charge of the toning sounds that Sarah and others have become accustomed to and are are using to heal the waters and the earths of the world. Therefore, do not stop them. They are actually very helpful to the atmosphere. You see, music and sound are very spiritual and can be used as such. When you're doing these sounds and letting them out, intend them to be positive and intend them for a positive change. Yeah, that that's kind of the the answer for everybody if you have a sound if you are somehow guided to make some kind of utterance let it out anytime you have something in that wants out just let it out no matter what it is and that helps your flow and it helps get that energy out and available the, the anytime you have something and also, in, yes. 
Also, right. there are times when the sound that you are making and producing and feel that you need to release is helping a particular stone, rock, piece, things that you may not understand to have sentience, like a piece of furniture or something of that nature, can also be affected by sound and also people. So therefore, you are helping the world around you in some way when you're spontaneously reacting to the sounds and giving them out. Yeah, I have a sound. I have a sound I make with my throat. It's just like a purring. It's just a and sometimes it's just like if I'm out somewhere, I'll just go because something wants it. I don't know why. <laughs> it just <Yeah. laughs> something wants it. So if it's a benefit, I just let it out sometimes just to and I've I've learned to actually yes. talk with it. Uh, I call it talking underwater. <laughs> but anyway, it's, excellent. You know, what's going on over there? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Then just let it out. You know, it's kind of silly sometimes. It's goofy and it's fun, but sometimes it just wants to come on. So, okay, whatever. <laughs> let it out. It is a galactic language as well. So therefore, part of what you're doing relates to a galactic language. Yeah, I wondered that because it's been wanting to come out a lot more and it, uh, it's being connected with some uh, some grunts and, and, and things and it just wants all kinds of neat throat interesting things it wants to wants to do so I imagine yeah. that's something that's fa I'm falling into an alignment with I think many are I think a lot in the group are uh, uh, approaching the languages and other things and weird sounds. So if you have a sound that wants out, basically just let it out. So the, I, I know when I was answering JD in, in his text, he says, "Yeah, but I want you to ask the question live." And I said, "Well, I know the answer is already yes. <laughs> you know that the blanket answer is yes all the time. If you have a sound that wants out, let it out." Yes. And there are vibrations to each sound that affect different things. Now, if there is a constant sound that you would like to leave out, if something like an ohm would come out, this affects the energy of all things in the room, all things that are around, and brings everything into one vibration, and so, so that you become one with it. This is another beautiful thing. I know many use the ohm sound to bless their food with um, as yes. they, before they this eat. This helps so. it to digest better because it's already part of your vibration. Yeah, that's The ohm sound is actually the, the language of the sun, which has been interpreted long ago by earthlings in the Buddhist temples and in the Zoroastric societies. Wow, that's very interesting. That's good to know. Let me approach some of the uh, hybrid children questions. Um, I have a question from Sam. Wants to know if any information can be given about the young hybrid child that he saw in his meditation some days ago that floated in front of a house. Was there a purpose to the message that she might have for him? And what is her name, he's asking. Do you know any information on this hybrid child? One moment, please. Where are you? you where is he that's Sam he's in Arizona uh, southern Arizona I think around Phoenix is his geographic yes. location home for many there is uh, there is a home for hybrid children there one moment ah just the child wanted to make itself known and to him because they are interested in becoming friends. Also, there is a, some sort of attachment there as well. There is an attachment of some sort that is closer. It's more, uh, it could be his own hybrid child. I am not certain at this point. The name of the child is Krakasa. Thank you for that. I have a question from Ra Indigo. Could you please elaborate on the blue feline cat being I saw in my dream? Where do they come from? I believe the being is a female and she was very friendly, smiling. Is this some kind of blue Lyran? 
did the raw indigo experience? Can you elaborate, please? If it was blue, it was not Liran. Uh, the Lirans are usually brown, tan, black. Uh, their fur is usually in a more neutral color. The blue cat species are from uh, Kel Kelsa 5. Kelsa And they are far, far away. But very friendly species and uh, fourth dimensional as well. Okay, well, so I am surprised. I did not even know that they were in this area at this time. But they might be protecting themselves from Kelsa 5. Okay. Well, were they bringing Ra Indigo a particular message, or they were just saying, hello, we're connecting, or can you add just I, a I do not bit know. Of... I will have to find out from them. We okay. could communi I could communicate with them, but at this point I do not know what the message is or the name of the being. Okay. Our friend Shin, our friend Shin, member Shin, wants to know if he's been to the colonies lately. Do you see him on your check-in list Shin. of late? Yeah, you remember Actually, Shin. Yes, yeah. I do. Shin came to Colony 3. They asked him to do a video for in his language so that it could be used throughout that area of the world. And yes, it was just in May that he was here last. And he was on Colony 3 and he chose to go to the healing colony also to check it out. Okay. Might you know when Shin might be returning? Because I feel that's a question. Is that something that he might be yes. able to know? Yes, he is coming in July. In yes. July, so sometime later this month. That's wonderful. 20. Let me ask Senga or Sengi. Goki Awa Ati. The 27th. 27th. Okay, so later in the month. Okay, awesome. Oh, Sam is also asking. So back to Sam again. If he's been to the colonies lately. Yes. Um, some information. Yeah, I already asked about he was in. He was in the colonies in June. And he was in uh, the Colony 1, actually, and Colony 4. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that. Slava is asking, um, request about the Lyran daughter. Is there such an opportunity, happy for the Lyran daughter, and any information uh, for him and his mom? So Slava is yeah. asking some things. Yes, his mom has a, a Lyran son, I think. Awesome, okay. And Can, he has a Lyran daughter, yes. And okay. her name is... Pankashi. No, Pankashi. I'm really going to have to have Slava have some private time with Jim so that he can talk to Ish and you if we can help set that up because he's been reluctant uh, lately to, <laughs> to say hey. Um, Very well. This one is from yeah. Teresa. She says, hello to Kerr, wondering if there's any messages from her spirit guides. Has she been to the colonies this year? Thank you and good day to you, friend. I would have to get in touch with your spirit guides to know this. However, you have been to the colonies, but not recently. It was the beginning of May, and you did go to Colony 1, and you stayed there for quite a while. Okay, so that was for Teresa. Okay, so any messages from her guides as well, or just I I do not I cannot attach okay. to the spirit guides right now. Okay, and that's okay, and I think that's kind of everybody for the moment. Very well. That that's caught There's up. There's much. Yeah. There's so many questions. It really for, folks are going to have to uh, email Jim with some of their questions just to. Uh, stay up on top of things and I know Valerie has some questions for you as well and maybe when Valerie's done uh, people in your room there too so Valerie you want to step up and catch up sure thank you very much Dan and we appreciate everyone's questions they're all very important and very informative anyways my question is do, can you please answer how we can use color and sound together for healing 
Do we use specific uh, colors for specific question. ailments? Yes. You see the chakras are have color attachments to them. And so you can use color to brighten chakras and heal because when using different colors you can use them for healing. Sound is also important because it changes vibrational the vibrations in the room, in the air, in the person. And so if you are guided by spirit to use the color and vibration, which is sound also, then you may do healing work with them. Now, there are many different ways to use them. You can attach sound to color in the sense that if you're picturing a certain color and spirit is guiding you with a sound tonality, it could be attached to different things. Let me give you an example. Green is a heart color, but it is also a calming color. It's also a health color. So you may be toning with the color green, and it could be um, per perhaps affecting the heart, the relaxation responses, and the healing of an individual. Green can also be used in other ways as well to brighten the chakra just as the green color brightens the heart chakra. So therefore, if you attach the vibrations and the, and the colors together, they can be helpful. Now, keep in mind that a lot of people use colors that are not chakra colors. In between colors, such as light greens or or a mauve, or different colors, these can also have different effects on different people. And I could t teach a class on how the colors work with different people in healing modalities, and also with the vibrations and sounds that can go with those particular colors. Or if spirit leads, there can be other ways to use them as well, but they, it is endless. Oh, that is wonderful. Um, I guess then I would love to request that I could attend that class at some point, if that's possible. There, well, there is not one planned, but now that I know that there is an interest, we will see what we can do. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time and your, your answers. Um, are, you. Is your host thirsty at this point? Of course. Oh, could we please get him a drink? Ah, yes, thank you. Welcome. That is sufficient. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. We must keep the host in good shape so that we can speak with you. Now, is there anyone in your room there with you that would like to have a question with you? I do not know. Could we please ask? Is there anyone here? No. Yerakawa Atia Shanti. I'm wondering, have I been to the colonies? Erica, is it that correct? You're right. Erica, you have been to the colonies at the end of May, May 28th. I remember because you had some questions about channeling. You were in the channeling area, and you want, you were very interested in some of the things that you felt in your in your thought process that you were actually channeling some things to people and to in at different times and the answers we gave you were yes it was but your channeling is coming along and will be used in a greater way in the future there is no way to push it really so therefore just relax into it and let it happen and it will it's it is coming it is soon of course, soon is a relative word, and that, uh, let me put it in a better way, within a few months. Okay, um, Carolina, or Carolina has a question, if she may. Hello. Hello, Tika, Muha. Muha, Yachi Kapwata. Kushota Yatuwa. Ha ha <laughs> How delightful. I miss you, Tika. I miss you as well. You have um, such a good sense of humor. 
<laughs> your Liren is you like to speak Liren in a very funny way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But it is very understandable and very humorous. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Deca, I wanted to send a message out to uh, all my hybrid children that um, yeah. I love them very much and that I'd love for them to contact me if they can. Yes. They will be in contact. And they have been in contact. It's not always that... Uh, you can hear them. Yeah. The earth energies are very disturbing at times. Yeah. And also, I would like to, to know if, if there is any messages for me in terms of uh, my healing or channeling or languages. Yes. You've been really awakened recently. There is a lot of things going on with you. You might not be aware of it, but you are, your vibration has risen quite dramatically within the last couple months. That Brilliant. is all I can tell you for now. Okay, thank you so much. I love you. I love you as well. No Kara, oh, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Sher. Sher was going to have a question, but if you have something more pressing, Dan? No, let Sher go. I'll go after Sher. Hey, Sher, how are you? I am fine. And you? I am uh, fine as well. Are you still working it with the horses? I'm going to finish this week. I'm going to train another. And then we will see from there. Do you see any see. opportunity for me? I see other opportunities. But continue in your question. Um, I was wondering... Uh, I know that humans have 12 streams of DNA. And for most humans, only one or two strings are opened and activated. Yes. Is that correct? I am not aware that you have that many strands. But you have two. Some humans are now approaching three. There are those that have a third strand that is not completely connected. There are beings in, in other species is that do have 12 strands of DNA, but most do not have that many. Most humans have two. Hmm. I know that there are 12 and only two are opened. Yes, they are. since they are not open, they are not considered strands, but something else. Ah. Okay, I was wondering how many do you have? Open. We have three. Ah, okay, I see. And did I recently visit the colony? Yes, of course you did. You were in several different areas. Actually, you did a training for galactic understanding in one of the classes because you've been to several different planets in Remulac space. There is many who want to hear about it, and in your subconscious, when you come to the colonies, it's all exposed, and you give much information about these things. Hmm. Nice. Okay, that's all my questions for today. Uh, much love to you and many thanks. Okay. You are welcome. Well, much we appreciate you. your time so much. If you have a blessing that you might... Put, oh. Give to us before you. Oh, may, may I ask a question? Oh, go me? ahead, Wendy. Oh, thank you. Hi, Chakur. It's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm very excited that you're here today. Thank you so much. I just wanted to send my love to all the hybrid children. I feel as if I haven't been able to spend as much time with them lately as I'd like to. Yes. I have been I doing have been the been signing for the children. Thank you. I wanted, I'm so happy you guys brought up about the color and I feel as if we've been working on that a little bit with the languages and the color and the healing and I would love to be able to learn to teach that as well. Yes, there are many things. You could have a very long class on color and sound integration. Yes, and there I was are wondering many if you could speak. Oh, yes. 
I was just wondering if you could mention just a little bit about the effect of the galactic languages in the, in the healing respect. Galactic languages can be very healing in the sense that they br bring about word combinations that do not exist on your planet and have very high spiritual resonation. So therefore, when you speak spiritual uh, galactic language and are intending for healing, there are phrases and words that do not exist on your planet that are used in these healing modalities. Therefore, you are uh, being healed by the vibration of some of these words, and spirit is reacting to the meanings of them as they are aware of them. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Thank you. And the sign you language is that... You, oh, you are one who does control some healing galactic languages, and you use them very well. Thank you. Thank you, Takur. And with, the, with that said, the sign language as well, is that part of that healing transmission? It can be for children. They understand the sign language. Some of them do not speak uh, English, and so they have to have it interpreted. But if I yeah. send out a signal to them, they can understand the sign language and understand what portion it is that I am sending to them. Thank you very much for that clarification. Um, several of us recently have been experiencing what we feel is perhaps we're together in our dream state. Is it are we at the colonies together or or are we somewhere else or is something you come else to happening? ask you, you can be in astral together and not be at the colonies but yes you do meet at the colonies and have many conversations when you do meet someone that you are happy to see you usually go to colony 5 and have a conversation before you start classes so yes but there are other places in astral that you do meet. There are Era for one place and Maya for another. Maya, I've been getting that name a lot lately. Could you um, elaborate on that for me? Maya is a Pleiadian planet as well. It is, a uh, great, okay. it is an important planet. Uh, they are starting to interact with Era a lot more. Ken Jean, the king of Era, is aware of all the different things that are happening on Maya at this time, and so therefore they are coming together more often. Ah, uh, okay. I feel as if I've been there, or that I've been connecting with them, or speaking their language, or something. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, I thought so. Thank you. Thank you, Chakra. I love you. Thank you so much for your work and your help and your assistance with all of us. And miato kohana muhasha noaka tuama iwa shuna. Nukua hata manya shukwiji. Nuti tuatito muhakwa. Kishuweta. Mikwa. Every blessing. Nikitwa. Ya. Mikwa. Thank you. Thank you so much. Christine, would you, would you like to go next? Ah. Hello, Takura. Hello, Christine. How are you? I am delightedly wonderful. Amazing. Can I, <laughs> can I ask you, is there a specific being I could ask for assistance when I'm um, working with the animals? One moment. There is a being that is around you a lot when you are working with the animals. It is a Yu Yil, a very small young gentleman. He is younger, uh, only about 30 year, year, years old in human age, but his name is Korshan. Oh, I have a problem with remembering names. So can He's I just... There, but Call him, well, what would you rather be called? He will Give him a human name and he will respond to that. Uh, I, 
I I would forget. I forget my fish's names. Um, how about if I just picture him or just picture I need assistance? Will that be enough? Yes. Just can, say out loud, I need some assistance, and he will be there to help you. Great. Thank Is, you. If you listen to this broadcast again, his name is Corson. And if you want to give him a human name, you may do so. He is totally open to that. Okay, so it's K-O-R-S-H-E-N? That is correct. <laughs> okay. Blessings to Kerr. Blessings. Hello to Kerr. I would like to try to finish up the events page. <laughs> um, from member of the higher mind? I forget yes. his name. He would like to know who is guiding him during his projects that he started recently when he was working on helping on guiding people towards their authentic self. Are there any blockages in his moment that are keeping him from contact with these entities? He feels like he has a Pleiadian connection. Can you help member there higher mind? Pleiadian. There is a Pleiadian connection that is helping him, yes. I do not see any blockages unless he puts them there himself. There is none from the outside. What other question was there there? Um, oh, you've already answered if Sam has gone to the colonies. Yes. Let me just scroll through quickly. I was just checking to see if there was any blockages, and I lost track of the question. Yeah, okay, no, just um, David is wondering what does it mean to go to the colony and do you go there in physical form, and I tried to explain to him it's mostly astral, but can you go into yes. just a quick detail Your about that? Your astral body goes to the, the colonies. We come to you, you agree to come or you do not agree to come. We ask you if you want to come in a particular time in your sleep. It usually is a two-hour period which is seemingly about five days here but only two hours on, on your earthly plane because you live it differently here than you would it's fourth dimensional here but yes you go in astral form and so therefore it is not a physicality we are working on bringing humans physically to the colonies but it has not been approved by your governments as of yet Okay. From member Karen, uh, she says, Hi, Takara, I've applied for Lyran and Yael DNA. Could you please tell me if it was accepted? Karen Gregorian? I don't know if you have that information available to you right at the moment well, or not. Well, does. Just a moment. All right. She's been approved for both, but Pleiadian will be first. Oh, okay. So she's asked for Lyran and Yael, but she's going to get Pleiadian first. Okay. Yes. They think that she will get all three, yes. Okay, perfect. Slava is asking for a bit of clarity. Uh, Slava asked, Takur said that I have a Lyran daughter. Is that correct? Because he felt so yes. in his heart. Okay. Yes, it is correct. Carol would like to thank you for the healing protectant for the, for the healing and protection uh, that you've done with her, she wants to give gratitude and thanks. Very well. She is, it is greatly appreciated, your thanks. And we so much want to give healing. There are many miracles out there that have been performed. God has been good. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'd like to thank everybody who uh, posted their questions. I tried to get to all of them. If I missed, I'm sorry. Um, Valerie, do you... Ha oh, had Valerie stepped out? I believe that it is time for us to close. Should all I give right. a prayer? Would you please? Thank you. One moment. Gerakwa san sunche kwati India tatu ko no wahashu satiti wa nema a oko chechwa nie keshu kwasha chechwa tin jutarwa tai India kwato 
noha shotiki detriata undia kwa antiku shindia fa the interpretation would be i will paraphrase it may god be with you every day in every moment and may you realize that he is there for you so that you may utilize his strengths and powers in each moment of each day. Be of love and kindness and goodness to one another and do not be harsh. Find a way to get through the day in a most positive way and be thankful that God is working with you. We give him thanks, we give him praise, and we give him honor. Thank and that you. would be it. Thank you, Dukur. May we bring Jim back, please? Yes. Namaste. Thank you, Dukur. Namaste. Namaste. Get your call. Hello. Hello. Welcome Hello. back. Hi, Jim. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Wow. Long. Just a little bit over. Just yes. a little bit over. Just a little bit over. <laughs> Just a little bit. That's okay. Did you have a good session today? Yes. Cool. Beautiful. You're awesome, Jim. Oh, you guys are awesome. It's your energy that helps. Really, you guys help with your energy. Especially the people in the room here, their energy really helps the, the entities get through and work. So, that's good. Good. Wonderful. I love everybody that's there. Oh, I see new faces coming in all the time. Oh, lots of, you know, lots I love of people you, are here. I love you too. <laughs> hey, Yummy. Hi. <laughs> well, so, anyway, any hey, any Amy. announcements before we go, or anybody want to say a blessing? I'd love to say a blessing. Oh, um, go ahead. Definitely. Go ahead. Go ahead, sis. I'm going to do one too, and anybody Thank else. <laughs> All right. I'd All right. Do a, couple a couple of blessings. あ、なななないや。あ、ななよととろとあたたやき。いやななななりやとは。あ、のなかやなななわてや。あ、ちょそうおととろとたななないやこわな。いやなららやこわとわたなな。よてててやななららやてやとわならやし。あ、こそこ
Sono hasile a nena kayua shisha kaya da kilahi. Lima alusa sopoya kilaki tarakalia sasaya. Halo asa. Tilia tarakiwa hata hisiana koya kapoya layana kiwa yishua. Laniana kia alahiana koa poha. Poha liana awu shaya mea wa kitu. Tila aliana ki saruya shishaya. Haya taya kasasaya lahiato koya. Ma wahi la sasoto rea kasha wahi lemonoa. Iwa ha shaiwa. Hotia. I kaya walia saniana kaya. Hashaya ya iso. Ni waliata kaya alesa. Nami anana ato. Alia satiara. Hoish yana iwa. Latuya. Misha yakola. Nami yana ku halasi. Namaste. Birth and death are part of everyday life in every universe, in every galaxy, on every planet. Even the ones you don't feel that there are life on, there is life there. Give thanks that you are a life that is sentient and beautiful. Let every part of your day reflect those things that you would want to project into the world. Many times you cannot see how you are, but others will judge you according to the way that you speak. So let it be known that you are for positivity and that you are doing the best that you can. We love and we enjoy each other in many different ways. Let it be known that we are part of a connection that reaches out as far as eternity. Yeah, too. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Oh, yes. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for doing the webinar. Thank you, everybody in attendance. Thank you for everybody on YouTube. Thank you, everybody listening. Thank you for being. <laughs> See you all next week. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Val. Thank you for being As always. Me. Great Thanks job, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Val has slipped out, but uh, yeah, okay. she, she'll okay. get the message. I just wanted to give our thanks to our yeah. beloved Dan for all the wonderful work he's been doing for us. And if indeed he's off to do other adventures, and we hope that you at least visit the webinar if you're not going to be hosting. And I just wanted to say thank you for all your exuberant and thorough work. Yes. Um, oh, I hope you're coming back for some time. <laughs> yes, so, I'll be around. I'm not going to be totally gone. I'm just. I know you're not, not going, going away, be, but I just wanted to yeah, thank you for no, all of your hostings, and so just wanted to put that out there and give our love to you too, Dan. Wonderful. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for being here. Yeah, it's yeah, the day, day came in. That's the day. <laughs> so many of you so out there. Beautiful. Emmy, mute. All right. All Love right. you all, and so Love you all. we're going to go to you all next week. I'm going <laughs> to do my George <laughs> Justin <laughs> job again. So say bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Have everybody. Have a great day.